Yeti works pretty good. Hey, hey, there we look are. at us. We're look here. at us. Let me uh, kill that backlight. I'm realizing that's a bit yeah. bright. So hold on a second. Oh, good afternoon, everybody. Well, yes, it's right. afternoon for some people, anyway. Exactly. Yeah, depending on where you are in the world. Oh. Hello. I'm gonna check and see um, if we're if we're live. Oh yeah, we should do that, shouldn't we? Because <laughs> we thought we were live yesterday. Yeah, joke was on us because we wasn't. No, we were not. Got my channel, your channel. I don't see anything. No, we're live. Are we? We are currently live. Yeah. Okay. Where do you? How do you get that? I'm just I just like, I just opened the link to it. Um, what is, is that part two? Yeah, that's part two. Just oh, there it is. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I changed to part two. Yeah. That's it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. We get to watch it in delay. <clears throat> if we watch it on our phones while we're doing it, we're literally watching the past. That's right. We're traveling through time. <laughs> I, traveling through time. Hey, Mark. Sending a picture. Good. Okay, good. We're just checking. Nice. Everybody, what we're going to be doing today, uh, we have the sheet right here. Uh, really quickly, let's show you guys. Um, there it is. It's got some aging, got paint on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it turns out the fun doesn't stop there. There are decals. This is things I actually like doing. So I know that Mike did a lot of the build stuff yesterday. But today I'm going to start cutting these things in like, uh, are, they, are they individual? They have to be cut really close. They need to be cut pretty close because uh, they're, they're on just one, one sheet, sheet of film. That's right. Yes, yeah. I've, I've experienced this once before. That's why yeah. I'm always big about that. Excellent. So in that case, what I'll be doing here. Hey, John, welcome. Hello. Hey, Sean. Hello. Hello. We're going to, let me shift. I got my tweezers and I have a, uh, and a craft knife. And I'm going to start cutting these guys. <laughs> This is, uh, can you grab me underneath that metal ruler? Yeah. There's a clear ruler. There's a clear ruler with a metal edge to it. I love yep. that thing. If you don't have one of those, it's a godsend. I do have one of these, and they are great. They are great, guys. These are the clear rulers with the metal edge, and we're going to, um, as you guys can see here, <clears throat> I'll slide the check here for, for a second. Uh, these are the decals. Look at that. Look how dope that is. There's all these cool things on it. And they go all over the tracker. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, how many how many of the do we need of each? So, the, it, it, so this is just one big sheet that was printed out for me for use on multiple trackers. Right, exactly. So we'll actually, <laughs> I don't remember, we're going to have to look at the reference pictures to see where everything goes. Okay. I know these go on top of this uh, right here. Uh -huh. And then you have like these squares and the crosses that go in here and they're not fun to install. No, I can and then tell you it. get decals on top of each and every one of these little buttons. What I'll do is I'll just do a section. At and, a we'll, and we'll just go from there. Yeah, cause I don't want to, I don't want to cut up your whole sheet. I was like, cause I'm very uh, cautious like that. Let's see, do this, right here, the red. We'll jump over here with the X's, right? Cause we want to screw those up here. Hey guys. Oh, watch this, you can go. It's a little, no, it's one guy. Little glare, yeah. Well, there, a little hot for you guys. Let me kill that real quick. We'll come in here. Now, I wonder what they use, the, where they got these decals. They make them in the 70s? Um, I, if you look at some of the stuff that looks like they were custom made decals, but then some of them I think look were, like they were pulled from other models. Yeah, they definitely do, don't they? So yeah. I, I think that was. Because I think these came from World War I German airplanes. I did too. It's just like, it's just the, I believe, the, called the Balkan Kreutz. Right. That was used in World War I. Because this one, when I'm looking at this, I'm this what I was thinking too. I'm thinking like these guys probably in the '70s very rarely were they. I mean, they do graphic. They did great. All the graphics on the walls are mm -hmm. wonderful. The design that went into those. And they probably they pulled these from other model kits. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they just did that. I'm sure they said they went out bought a bunch of kits, and then people just over the years made these to match. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Move the microphone. Yeah, we were building yesterday, and I know we looked at each other, and I was like, wow. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah, we were pretty worn out after that. It was it was a busy day getting yeah. this stuff all ready, but 
Anyway, we'll cut these guys up. Yeah. And it's 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 fortunately we have we have comparatively very little left to do on this thing for it to be done. Yeah. Some decals, a couple of wires, and a hose, and that's that's it, and then it's finished. Besides doing some post weathering, and I know you yeah. talked about going in and doing some more detail painting. Yeah, I want to do a little bit with some aging with oils, but this yeah. do that off camera because yeah. I'll just noodle that forever. The um, thing is funny is that. Uh, he does have, we're talking about lighting, so I'm eventually going to light mine up too. That's one thing I'm definitely, mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to want to do. And uh, we'll take these guys. And I tell you what, let's get some scissors. Trim these guys down a little. Yeah, I could, I could, it's a lot easier now. I cut them in strips. I can just take these guys and with some scissors and just cut them. As you can see, I'm leaving a little bit of a border to them. So we got that. And that. So guys, really quickly, while we're doing, if anybody have any questions for myself and Mike, that's what we do. We uh, we build and we talk. I do it on my live stream a lot on on Twitch, but I'm work slowly working my way over to YouTube. I'm starting to grasp the use the YouTube thing, <laughs> which I think is a great thing to do. I want to eventually going to work toward doing a build, do a phone build on YouTube. Is this your is this your first actual prop build on on YouTube? Yep. Nice. I've never done I've never done anything live on YouTube. Oh, well. well, me neither. So this is my first as well. And uh, I got the idea from my friend Odin. Odin makes. Oh, he, Odin makes. Yeah. He does all. He does. I think he shoots them live and he cuts them down. Nice. And that's the things I was concerned about. Was like I think if I eventually um, will do this with a build, I'll probably have the video up. But once I put the I did one down, I probably take the old one down. Mm -hmm. I don't want people getting confused. Like. Well, we've been shooting, and you can't see it on on these cameras, but. Um, I've been shooting a whole lot of different angles with several different cameras, so we're going to be taking all this footage and compiling it down into a really nice, uh, a minute, succinct I'm, I, build. I might, just tell you, I might just not even use any of my stuff and just use you guys. Cause I'm, there you go. Well, I guess, we'll just send you the video and you can post it. How about that? And I'll do that. That'd be awesome, because I'm telling you right now, I, just, I don't want to edit this. Yeah. Because the, uh, the same editor that I used for my series, Props to History, on my channel, forward slash Props to History, uh, is going to edit this down for us. And uh, it'll be brilliant when she's done with it. She's an amazing editor. That way, if anybody wants to build one of these things, uh, they'll have a, a decent set of instructions to go by. Now, this is, you said you also you also just sell kits, right? Did you sell I used to. Um, oh, you I've, stopped doing I've it. stopped selling the kits, mostly because the molds are getting old. And Do you have any, you don't have the heroes of pieces? Oh, in? no, I have, I have heroes to make new molds with. But, but you, just don't want, you just don't want to make the molds anymore. Yeah, I just don't want to do it anymore. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I hate to it's nice to say it, but I hate to say it, but I'm, I'm too busy to do it now. No, I understand. I have a, uh, just recently, I got to write to those guys today. I got a 3D printer from Metter Hackers, and I got to sit down and start making a schedule of when it's going to start watching videos mm -hmm. and tutorials because I, I, my day's busy with doing stuff that I need to do for my channel. So we do get busy, and it's just like it eats up a lot of time. Oh, yeah. So it's like, that's why when people go, oh, you're going to build a costume. It's like, I... I gotta worry about my videos before I start having fun about building a costume for something. <laughs> and I know that people go, well, you just make it turn it into content. I'm like, yeah, but sometimes making a video on your costume build doesn't really. It doesn't translate all the time. Yeah, it doesn't really translate into something that would be good content. It's yeah. like. Yeah, because I've done a lot of builds that I film them and then I go back and watch the footage and I'm like, well, this is garbage. Nobody's gonna watch this. Because the angles are wrong. Because you're focused on the build. You're not focused on the film. Yeah, and, and it's kind of, yeah, and I build really fast. And if I'm shooting a video, I, I can't build fast. Because mm -hmm. I have to document everything. So, but. Um, you, need, you, need a, you need a cinematographer in here full time. That's, dude, Odin makes, when he works, he has somebody shoot his stuff for him. And they edit. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I want, I'm going to meet him soon. I'm, I, we met briefly. And we had a good time hanging mm -hmm. out. But I'm going to talk to him a little bit more details about like, who does his. Yeah. How they work that out. So. I'd, I'd very much like to meet Odin one of these days. He is going to be, I'm going to meet him in, uh, in April. Oh, really? I'm flying out next, yeah, this next month I'm going to uh, Oklahoma. Oh, really? For, Specifically to meet him? Or? Well, for a con. He's oh, going to be con, okay. He's going to be there. And I met him at uh, Los Angeles Con. It was really sweet. We totally hit it off. It was great. Nice. Such a great time hanging out with him. And the fun thing was, while we were hanging out together, this girl came by and freaked out on Odin. She said, oh, my God, you, Odin, Odin. And he's like, hey, how you doing? And, she, and then she was like, watch this video on how to make your Hellboy hand. Oh, great. And then she turns and goes, oh, my God, evil Ted. <laughs> and she goes, I do. I watched your video on how to make my horns. It was, we were both laughing because she was fangirling because yeah. she watched both our channels. And she had a costume where she used both our tutorials, the big 
Well, the two of you made her day without a doubt. Yeah, and we got pictures with her, so it was oh, pretty nice. funny. She was a female hell girl or something like that. Hell was, girl. Yeah, hell yeah. girl. It was very funny. Uh, but that was a that was fun. All right. I think we have enough right here, don't we? Yeah, I think we do uh, to get started. Um, right. We probably won't even use that many, truth be told. We'll have to look at some reference photos. Well, too, well you want to start with these guys? And you yeah. said there's two of these so far? Yeah, or? there's two of these. They go on top of... Oh, okay. oh my hand's right in the way. They actually go on top of the ice cube tray. <laughs> All right, here, let's move these guys out of the way real quickly. So these two go on the ice cube tray. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to chuck these guys in the water. We got this one here, and in you go. Pull up some of my references here right. so we get them right. There you go. And you said uh, while well, those guys are soaking, these red guys go where now? There's three of those that run right alongside these three buttons. They're right in line. You got it. All right. I, I think I got, I'm, I'm ready to test my mad placing skills. <laughs> I'm going to dip into my childhood of the model kit days and decals. Yeah, and then you have you got to leave a space in between the buttons and those because you've got the three. Oh, the cross. There There's three crosses. All right, here we go. Wow. They just went willy nilly with these things. We were talking about this yesterday, and we were trying to remember who built the trackers for the movie. We found out it was, uh, it was um, Ash. Oh, right? was yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Ash. Yeah, Ash, yeah. Ash. He, he's the one. He, there's like a throwaway line where he says, I'll see what I can put together. And then he slaps these things down in front of everybody and that they he tells them that they work off of what is it micro changes in air density yeah yeah micro changes in air density they're like what what's that mean yeah, yeah. some nonsense science words that make sense at the time <laughs> micro changes in air density all right that's the wall that those are soaking Whew. um is everybody are they still here do we still have everybody oh do we have yeah. everybody guys we're here, we're here. Yeah, it's us. Oh, you oh here, you, yeah, you, you get the okay. low one and let okay. me get the high one. Yeah, because I am taller than you. So you are taller kinda, than me. Oh, look, now we're the same height. Just making sure people can see us. Yeah. And it's working. <laughs> hey, somebody comment in the comment thing so that we can know that yeah, it, yeah, somebody's sure, here. If somebody's here, please let us know we're, you're still here. Yeah. Because mm. I can look on my phone and see if people are live. Oh, yeah, do that and we'll, and we'll come yeah, by. All right. They got some tweezers too, when I'm ready. There are apparently seven people watching us right now. Fantastic. Thank you, all seven of you. Yes. Um, Is recording? Yep. Yeah, babe. Oh. Well, we're live. I mean, if you want to call it recording. <laughs> Kevin oh. Toft here. Uh, hit rec start recording. Here it says on the mouse. That's what we did not do. It's okay. I got plenty of footage already, so. That's, that's why I was like, I'm just getting it. Yeah. Oh, goes, I'm not here. All right, Vaughn. I am here. not here. I am a meat popsicle. I am a meat popsicle. Oh, sure. Hold on. Ted will be right back. He's going to you can entertain people. Yeah, I'm going to entertain you with, uh, by putting some decals on. So, those are good. want to get water on those. Oh my, these things are coming apart. Oh no. Well, this is an issue, folks. Um, these decals, as it turns out, were printed on a white background. So these decals are worthless. What? They're printed on a white background. <laughs> <laughs> we can't use these decals. Oh, can't use any of them? Nope. With a white background, they're, they're supposed to be they're supposed to be okay. <laughs> well, that's a bust. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Oh. Well, we only we only lost a few, but it doesn't matter because they're not usable. <laughs> yes, you know sometimes when that happens when you do, when they get do they do decals. This is what this is a perfect. This is a perfect production aspect of things. Mm -hmm. This happens yeah. quite often. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ah, uh, I'm uh, sorry. I generally think it's really funny. I, I, I'm not even upset because it's so Hollywood. That's perfectly. I find it quite hilarious, too. And, and I know what has happened here. I believe that what I have done is inadvertently brought the test sheet of decals with me. 
uh, and this was a test that was done by the, fo the fellow that made this stuff, and that I probably have a really nice set of decals sitting at home on my desk in Indiana, uh, which doesn't help us here. That's so. all right. Well, guess what, guys? Uh, in that case, we're just going to hang out and do questions and answers for a little bit. Yeah. But while we do it, let me just show you really quickly. Oh, let's go back to the overhead. What we did so far on the tracker. Mike clued me in, so I went on the website and looked around for images of the, from the movie, and I went in and painted these top these things red. Uh, Those guys are red. This is red. Uh, I took some a burnt sienna with a little bit of black and made it a little bit muddy on a wash. Um, again, you guys can see it, it looks nice and dirty in some spots. I am going to go through and do some a little. I like using oil paints for weathering because you have more control. So I'm just going to highlight these edges without over because I like the silver. I don't want to dirty it because the problem is that when you go with acrylic, sometimes it gets too crazy and it sticks too much. You can't get it all off. But if you go in with oil paints, uh, like make it a little burnt and black, so, you know, go in the edges and wipe off the excess. It just cleans up the line, but has a nice fade. It doesn't dirty everything. It just highlights the edges. So I'm going to do that on all these corners and crevices. Uh, Born Again Maker asks, uh, can you trim the decals down to the edge of the graphics? While we technically could, could, because this is the test set of decals, they're not sealed at all, and they also have a lot of open space in them, and we would we would spend more time than it would take for me to fly back to Indiana and ship them to Ted. Yeah, it would be yeah. It, in the long run, it's actually easier. Yeah. But no. So we'll just I'll just I'll just ship you a, a better set of decals. Yeah, but, but but I do appreciate it. But yeah. So on the um, again, like this guy right here is that. I'm sorry. Uh, this grading too. I'm gonna do all black. Sorry, get some black oil paints and yeah. aging all around. But just overall, it just looks great. It just it's it just, it's got it's all its seventies. Oh, another thing we do too is like uh, you can kind of see it's unpainted, which I'm gonna do some touch up here. Um, we discovered uh, this is upside down, but again in the movies, I think there's some they're up and the others are twisted, yeah. vice versa. But I know it's the majority of the pictures they have the hole in the top, so it's yeah. fine. So. But yeah, you have you now own a tracker. Uh, this this is a piece of Hollywood history, dude. Yes, it is. I can't I can't. Hold on, let's go back to let's get yeah. face no, cam. Let's get out. Let's get out here, bro. This um. Yeah. I like when they do this thing where he puts it and he goes. Oh yeah, he, he does throw his hand in front of it, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And there it is, and of course there's some wires that come out of this that go into this, the earpiece and stuff. So, but yeah, this is this is amazing. Yeah. What are you gonna we can do with it now? Huh? Now that you built it, what are you gonna do with it? Uh, we are talking about this, and I uh, have a sh I have my shop upstairs, but um, I might clear up a spot in my room. This will might motivate me to clean my room, and I want to have an alien area or an alien corner. We have our dog, our dog Bean sleeps in our room with us, but we realized we had to put a uh, a dog bed in the room with us because she crawls on us and wakes us up at like three a.m. to go outside. So we definitely have a dog cage, and she sleeps in that. But it took up a lot of real estate, and I'm like, ah, if we didn't have that dog cage, put it there. So my plan is I want to put a display up, but I want to have, um, I'm just going to think about it. Because this yeah. makes me realize you can't, if it sits up in your shop, it's up on my shop. So a lot of people don't see it. Yeah. It gets dusty. And so, well, not like it's not going to get dusty downstairs, yeah. but I want to have this on display. And also, this has inspired me because I have a 3D printed model of uh, my friend. Um, I got I feel so bad. He printed it for me. I have it. It's a, a new tracker from Aliens. Ah, this is from okay. Alien. So I figured if you have the one from the first movie, I gotta have one from the second movie. Yep. And it's same thing again. I'm feeling it clean up and paint it. But even though it's like a light brown, like a boat brown color, like a, I'm gonna paint it all drab. Let's do the the screen the, the screen color, the screen accurate yeah, the color. Screen. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because in the movie they I watched that movie recently, and they look all drab. Yeah. And that's, I love that about it too because of the cameras and the lighting at the time. You have two different versions of the prop. You have the prop accurate and the screen accurate. Right. And the prop accurate was painted with Pactra brown best paint. Yeah. Because in the lighting and on camera, it looked all of drab. And I've seen uh, pictures of the original. This was actually painted all, all of drab. Right. Like a very odd shade of all of something. Right. And, and I, it took a while to finally match that color as best as I could. And it's, uh, it's one of the many things I've obsessed over. I know. I think in the this. movie they look kind of gray. It's hard yeah, to test. It's really weird what it's they look like. like so. Yeah, it's so hard to tell because you're on set with lighting and stuff. And you only see them for a few seconds at a time. Yeah, they do. And they're never really. And this is how they got away with the ice cube tray. Because when I finally saw one up close, there's an ice cube tray. And I've seen Alien a lot. Mm -hmm. And now when I saw it, I look for it, I can see it. But you don't. It's never really heavily featured. 
They're just doing this with it and moving. And they, they serve the purpose of what they're supposed to be. They're just things with shapes on them. It's just like this thing with a tube and a handle and gobbly goop stuff all over. And in the movie, they're so impressive because look at this. You got so much going on. And Mike and I are making jokes about it because we were laughing about all the buttons on top and how it made no sense. And then once it's together and paint, I'm like, it does make sense. It really gives it a lot of texture, like something's going on. Yeah. And so now I have to, re I really have to change my attitude. It uh, follows the rule of cool. Yeah, absolutely. It does. And especially with in Aliens of the 70s, it's just, it definitely looks. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm quite happy that, that, that I got to come out here and build this with you because I've, I've built, I think I've, at this point, I've built 15 of these things. Yes, you were telling. And, and I never really get to see the person that gets it. Like the, like the, I always ship it to someone, so I never get to see their reaction to it firsthand. And, oh. and seeing your reaction has, has been quite fun. Oh, well, thank you. It, well, because it, it was it was such a fun time to come out here and one to build with you because I've looked up to your work for a long time. Oh, shucks. And it's... to sit here with Evil Ted <laughs> and do work with Evil Ted and build this thing that I spent so long researching. It was, oh, it's been very very rewarding. So thank you, Ted. For oh, you're me welcome. Come out here, here. scoot a little bit over so get, we'll get more centered. Yeah, that way. There we go. Yeah. Oh, that's no, 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 no. camera. It's camera right. Yeah, yeah. Camera right. Cam, yeah, camera right. Yeah, camera right. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I work in the movie industry. Uh, uh, <laughs> technically, I do too. Uh, do you use a particular brand of paint for airbrushing? Do you use a specific air paint for uh, airbrushing? It, it varies. Uh, mostly, I'll be honest with you. There's for two different mediums. If I'm doing um, mostly my props and cosplay stuff, um, I put the always the base color of something is usually Rust-Oleum 2X uh, paint. Um, if it's a cosplay um, uh, proper gun or weapon thing, yeah, it's always, I always figure out, I'll look, at the, I'll look at my design and see what the predominant color is. I do a base coat with that first. And then uh, I'll go back in, and my favorite's Tamaya, the Japanese paint, which we uh, had some. Uh, was some here. We was some here, yeah, yeah. put it all away. But the Japanese, uh, and they're, they're small and they're expensive for a reason, but they're for models, but we use it a lot in the process of airbrushing. But again, majority of colors, if it's two big primary colors, I'll paint the lighter base first with 2X and then let it dry like for a day, mask it, do the second color or whatever it is, and let that dry and go back in with the airbrush. Uh, for completely foam all the way, still do the 2X, but for uh, instead of new, I like the, um, Plat effects paints, uh, the new plat effects paints, the flexible paints. I heard that they were discontinuing plat effects. FX? Yeah, that they was being discontinued. What? Yeah, that there, there's a. Uh, I saw a, an article not too long ago that plat effects was being discontinued. Because I don't know if it's a rumor or or what, but uh, it's wonderful paint. I it's use such it a, a lot. great paint. Oh my god. Yeah. Hey guys, real quickly, if anybody can do research. Is that, am I wrong? Did I did I see that wrong? Um, because it's an amazing paint. I bought, it's like, because what I like about it, it's uh, it's got amazing metallics and it's durable and flexible. Mm -hmm. And I think either people don't understand, because uh, I like it for airbrushing. I think they need to educate people about the airbrushing aspect of it. Because people use it as a brush paint mm -hmm. and they get frustrated because you have to do it like, uh, like nail polish to do a couple thin coats to get the color base down. But if you thin it down with a window cleaner, you can airbrush it and it's magical. And so I've got a bunch of it I bought for some props I was using and I was going to paint this costume for a film I wanted to do and a majority of it was going to be plat effects paint. That's terrifying. Yeah. I really love it. So it'd be a shame. I use a lot of Vallejo paint because uh, as a model maker that's what I got used to. Well, said, I thought it was Carlson Studio. Oh yeah. There, it's uh, So Iron Bear Armory is my uh, my good friend Freddie in Indianapolis mm -hmm. and uh, he said holy crap is that props to history with Evil Ted. Yes as a matter of fact it is props <laughs> to history with Evil Ted. He said, I thought it was MTS. MTS Props was the name of my, my fab shop for a long time. Oh, okay. But it's combined now with HTC Fabrication into Corazon Studios in Chicago. So they're just making fun of how many names I've gone through. Oh, that's mm -hmm. wonderful. That's all. Jerks. I'm sorry. Love you guys. Thank you to Michael. <laughs> but yeah. Sure pick it up. I, uh, I, I use Vallejo a lot. Simply, and it's just the same as Tamaya. It's very, very expensive. Yes. But the color is wonderful on it. But I do use Plat Effects. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, as a primer, though, I almost exclusively use Rust-Oleum, and I almost go completely with neutral gray. All right. And then I go through and I change the colors around as needed, because neutral gray, I can just paint it all one color and then go through and mask it and do right. it Right, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, um, it, well, again, it's, it's I, I broke my comfort zone, because I think it was always black or gray, like, like you did at the beginning. When I started cosplaying, I was doing this kind of like space, well, my own version of space marine, 
kind of like from the game. Um, God, when they all, all the guys have the cool armor, um, uh, Destiny, all the Destiny armor. Mm -hmm. I was inspired by Destiny, so I made a Destiny-like helmet and costume. And my friend uh, Senate it, uh, calls him he's spicy tie design in New Zealand. He said, dude, do some bright, do some whites, do some whites and reds. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's right, because I was going to do black or gray and just do a dry brush on it. I thought, he's right. So I ended up, instead of my comfort zone, I did like an eggshell white with gray and red signinias on and stuff on it and it, it came together and I, and I thought I did something I, I thought I'd never do so it really opened my mind so now I like doing bright colors I'm making and working on a Mandalorian heavy infantry uh, there's a guy named uh, Mighty Mike Props uh, he made uh, Mandalorian heavy infantry Mandalorian armor patterns already and they're free and I think they're on the Mandalorian's uh, Facebook group so I made them available I downloaded them and start making them. They're beautiful patterns. I'm, and I made a helmet, uh, and so I painted it red and yellow, my theme. So the helmet's red with yellow. And when you start dirty up an agent, it just really stands out because I know the one in the show is like gray and light blue. Mm -hmm. But I figured if I'm going to do something, I just want to mix it up. So I like doing my own, make my own. Like I like doing Star Wars, but put my own spin on it. <laughs> it's a, it's. I've spent the reason I do that because I spent 30 years of my life matching stuff, working from photographs or from design. And so all of a sudden now in my cosplay career, I'm going to try to match something from a TV show or movie. Hell no. <laughs> I'm going to build what I want to build. I'm done with that stuff. I'm done I've, with matching shit. I've set, my, I've set myself the exceptionally daunting task of building a full-size Mondo Shiwan <sighs> from The Fifth Element, which I, you, of course, worked on. Yeah, uh, I did the miniatures. Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, I've seen some people, and the best way to do that is when you pattern it out, uh, doing, doing series of rings, like figure out the size of the abdomen like how big his belly's gonna be make a ring mm -hmm. like either cardboard or make it out of foam and then like you know the width of the shoulder and then what you do is you start making strips to connect them and then as you go from enough that's where you'll start to under, you'll start to see your patterns you can start yeah. to pattern things out it's um I'm working on a battle sister and what's I wanted to do the ring on her suit and her shoulder pieces and I realized I want her helmet to fit and so that's why I'm building the helmet first. When the helmet's done, I'm going to drop it on my uh, model slash uh, cosplayer who's going to wear it, and I'm going to make sure the rain clearance is just right. So once I have the helmet, make sure it fits. And then I'm going to do a strip of foam. I'm going to get to where it fits. I'm going to do little strips of foam from the chest, the back, and the sides, and then I'll fill in the gaps with paper and poster board. And <laughs> just winging it. Yeah. That's I, I managed to get my hands on a screen used, uh, well, it's not screen used, but it's a uh, it's a casting from the production molds of the Mondashiwa's head. So I'm going to use... Oh, uh, that's the reference. A pro yeah, production-made head on the costume, but it has all the electronics in it, so the head will move, the vents open on the face. Oh, wow. Um, and the thing is funny, the heads are small compared yeah, to the body. Yeah, the little chicken head that it has, yeah. Yeah, it's, beep, 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 beep. I, yeah, it's like... Not very big, is it? It's yeah, no, like, it's it's comparatively it's tiny to the rest of the suit because the suit I think I worked the math out on it. It was close to eight feet in height with all of the antennas and everything that are on it. And I've gotten some castings of the of parts of the gloves that were production made, mm -hmm. and then some of the antennas. So it's I'm trying to make it as screen accurate as possible because I love that movie. Uh, ready for this? Mm -hmm. um, where are you gonna put it? Oh, I have no idea. Exactly. I haven't figured that part out yet. I don't worry about those things. That's a this is a conversation you have with the wife because I'm telling you right now, this is what stops me from having any um, uh, 40k battle armor because people are like, oh, I tell you, should do a 40k build. And they're like, seven feet tall. I know those guys tall. are huge. Yeah. And so I like the 40k universe, and that's why I'm doing a battle sister because she's based a little bit in reality. So I'm doing a battle sister, and I'm also considering doing the ground soldiers. On 40k, the, the the foot soldier guys without the armor, what are they? The um, Astra Militarum, the Imperial Guard. The Imperial Guard mm -hmm. guys, and they have armor and helmets. And I've seen um, the figurines, you know, and I've seen artist illustrations and variations. And so I'm like, I'm going to take the concept of those two and kind of mix them together, but I would like to do my own version mm -hmm. of those guys. Therefore, if I go to a con, it'd be fun. Therefore, these could, they could be giant Marines there, and I could just blend in. Like, I'll be... Tuck, I'll be I'll be the little guy <laughs> with the gun that's going to get annihilated in two seconds. Like, oh, yeah. hey, I'm here. <laughs> oh, dead. Because <laughs> they have no armor. But you have these genetically cloned monster trooper guys with yeah. body armor. And Oh, yeah. I've, I've, I've been playing 40K since 1989. Oh, God. So I, I I'm just, well steeped in the lore. 
I just started getting into the prop making aspect of it and really liking it. So I'm working on the Battle Sister right it's, now. They're fun visuals. Like yeah. the artwork and everything in it is magnificent. And so. apparently, you told me that it started from some metal guys. Yeah, it was uh, back in the 80s in England. Uh, it was some, basically, it was some heavy metal fans that wanted their own game. So they created Warhammer. And it was very heavily influenced by by heavy metal their love of the 80s heavy metal and their hatred of margaret thatcher <laughs> and <laughs> um it was it was very reminiscent of that and they they, they stole a lot of stuff or while well, they didn't steal they borrowed a lot of story elements from dune uh, very heavily from dune and a lot of other sci-fi uh, at the time but it's since that time it has evolved enormously into this unbelievably expansive backstory and ridiculous line of miniatures and games and all this other stuff and, and they're, they're branching out into video games and, and that sort of thing um, and everybody wants to see a live action but I don't think they'll ever do one no I found out um, when I heard about the lore of all behind it no way you're going to be able to nobody, you're never going to get financing nope. to make a live action movie with the dark depths of craziness that makes 40k Warhammer yep. and all the fans will be like ah! they would just lose their shit if it wasn't accurate so mm. Nobody's going to touch it. The thing they could possibly do is do an animated movie. The digital technology is out there. Mm -hmm. and they could do an end of... Somebody could round the money up and do an independent like Warhammer movie digitally. There you actually could, is. No, see? It's called Astartes. Astartes. It's about Space Marines. It's like, I think, five or six very short episodes that one guy created. Okay. And well, I'll show it to you later. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. The footage is amazing. The technology out there now, it's amazing what these guys can do now. Full Power Creation says his is only 8.5 feet tall. <laughs> that's of course what, it is. That's why I'm going to be a foot soldier. Yeah. I'm not doing that. I'll be <laughs> pew pew. Just be oh, the little guy with a flashlight. Uh, I'm dead. Hey, what's that? What's that over there? <laughs> Riddle with bullets and I die. And it's like, I get stepped on or inviscerated. So, I guess, Ted, we built this tracker. Yes, sir. What are we going to build next? That's actually a good question. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess really quickly, I know there's something that Mike wants to build. He found it in my shop, and he's kind of obsessed on it. And uh, <laughs> I want, if Mike wants to go reach up and grab it and share it with everybody. Yeah. So he showed me this <laughs> yesterday, and I want this a lot. So uh, this space, Spaceman helmet and uh, components, it's all held in with magnets. I think it's, it's this yeah, way. Yeah, 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 just lift up. It comes just off. lift up. But... This, you're releasing these files soon, right? Uh, <laughs> well, something the, like them. What, yeah. hap what happened was is yeah. that I did this. I was working. I did this my prototype, and I ended up getting it all done. I'm like, yay, it's all done. And then I was going to do one um, to do a video on building this thing. And the visors are from the skydiving company. Uh, their manufacturers aren't – they fall behind. Well, it all started because of the pandemic. Hmm. So the pandemic froze everything up, and now everything's piled up and backlogged. And so the company has them are not getting them fast enough from the manufacturer. So what little they have in stock are sold out. And I wanted these particular visors, and they don't have any more. They have them in blues and reds and yeah, but not tinted. Clear. But I want the clear. And they're like, well, we only have these left. I'm like, oh, dang it. So I wanted to make them available, and unfortunately, they're not. Yet. Well, it, when they become available, Ted, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have them because I really want to build this and then build the rest of a suit to go with it. Well, guys, really quickly, I'll tell you what. We're all here live here on YouTube. Well, we can look, keep, right. keep, keep, you keep down? Yeah. Uh, and Mike came out of the kindness of his heart and very sweet of, to get this for me. And we made this together. So I realized what I could do to make him so happy is that is my gift to you. What? That's Mike's house. This is, you built this, though. Yeah, that's, this is your prototype. Well, I have another one. I have built two. Oh. I have one that has lights in it, and ah. it's got a fan. And eventually, I'm going to remake it again and do some changes on it. Yeah. But this is one. I, and I, I had fun. So when I built the other when I, I always build. When I build for movies, I, I built something. I built, for, I built two right. at the same time. So I built two of them identically at the same time. So And I did this. But although this needs some work, you can go home and do more. Yeah. I'm, I left up so you can paint it. Do whatever you want to it. You can put lights in it. But... Uh, Mike, thank you so much for coming out and giving me this super badass alien tracker, <laughs> which is a lot of work, a lot of money, and all this stuff, and he's given it to me, and I don't really have anything I feel of equal value, but since he went fangirling on this, <laughs> so now you have, you have, here, Mike, you gotta, you gotta put it on, okay, wait, okay. wait, wait, here, let's pull this tab out, okay. pull, pull this yeah, off pull here, pull the tab off, yeah, let's see, see the, the razor knife, we'll get rid of that, I'm just gonna reach up and pull it off, let's get, let's get your helmet on, 
And I have a hole in here, and I'll what you do, you'll tell you how to hook up a, a, a fan, an air mover. There we go. Get a little fan helmet in there. So I'll take my glasses off. Yeah. See if I can fit my giant head through here. You gotta kind of, you'll get it, turn your head sideways a little bit there, like there a stormtrooper. Okay. All right. And then you reach on the front like this, get lined up. Magnificent. I don't know if you can hear me or not. It doesn't matter. This thing is great. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this, though, right away. It needs a fan. <laughs> well, that's uh, uh, the hole there. When, once, yeah, for when the I was on set, you throw it on, and we had to turn it on immediately because there's no air. Yeah. And so we had the fan blow on, and the guy's just like, oh, this is great. I said, yeah, but they can't. you have to turn it off and on. When they, so I put a switch. So the thing is, there's a light for the helmet to light up. I kept it, what I ended up doing, mm -hmm. I rigged up a little nine volt battery holder here, and I rigged up lights with the switch on the actual helmet itself. Yeah. And so you could hit the switch and turn the lights on and off in here, and the fan switch was on this. That's the hole. He's talking yeah, about. and yeah, yeah, the hole. That's the blower right there. And I, it's made to fit this uh, these helmet air movers things. Yeah. I'll send them an Amazon like where to pick one. It's yeah, super absolutely. easy. But um, yeah, this is really uh, I'm very proud of this. But um, I've had this, and you just. This is so cool, and I've I like, just I love the shape, the design, the aesthetic you. of it. I just it just appealed to me immediately, and I was like, I'm gonna build one of those when when the plans come out. Well, now I guess I don't have to, do I? Because now I have I, I have an Evil Ted original. There you go. Which I, I feel like I don't want to do anything to it except leave it as is. Oh no, you have to paint it. You no, know, I'll finish it. Yeah, you yeah. know, I might leave the helmet the way it is and just match it to this, and and then put it up on a on a on a, on a plinth. Yeah, my, like on, on the movie, I actually kept this orange, and I painted this, like, metallic. Mm -hmm. I painted this metallic. I actually did dark. I did dark. I think I did the uh, painted silver and did the rubber, like, I did the same thing on the helmet. Mm -hmm. uh, I did aging with uh, acrylic and wiped off the excess because this is rust 2X, so you can go crazy with the acrylic uh, and it bites the nooks and crannies, and then when it dries, you wipe off the excess, and, and where you take a paper towel and some denatured alcohol, you can go... Yeah, it takes, pull it you, off. Yeah. You pull off the... Uh, the dirty um, acrylic. But, uh, yeah, well, but now I need to find a box to ship it in. <laughs> that we're going to do today. We're yeah, gonna, we'll gonna, find a box for it. We'll find a box off ship. Oh, that's fantastic, man. Thank you so much, Ted. Thanks, Ted. <laughs> You're so welcome. Appreciate right? it. You're so welcome. That's awesome because I, I, I made two. Yeah, and now I own one of them. And now over my brain, I was thinking, and my brain, like, you know, I'm going to make more. I got the pattern. I already have one with lights and everything in it. And I gotta make. I gotta contact the guy because he it's he borrowed it from the movie and he still has it. So I gotta get it back for him because so, I want to bring. I want to take it to the convention. I want to take it to the con. So yeah, that's super cool, Ted. Thank oh. you so much. All these things are just falling apart. Oh yeah, yeah, they're yeah they're not sealed, so they're deteriorating badly. Here we'll, no, we'll show the show the people. This is what happens when you use decals that don't uh, that aren't sealed correctly. Yeah, they they, just, they, they crumble. They, they deteriorate. They're just falling apart. Yeah, this just is really hot light, unfortunately, yeah. but they're just they're just deteriorating badly. That's so. alright. That's okay. We'll 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 get that sorted out. I'll get you a new set of decals now, <laughs> and then you can decal up your your uh, is, uh, 1979 Alien Tracker. Uh, does your you have your GoPros pointed at us? I guess no, no. no. Uh, I don't have any GoPros pointed at us, but we can. No, that's um, right. No, because I'm saying it was uh, we'll we'll do that for your video. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. We'll we'll show we'll do it again. But yeah. Um, well, guys, I tell you what, we're we we're gonna do this big deal, but we're pretty much done. So yeah. we're, gonna do, we're just gonna wrap up because we have other th we have other stuff we'd like to do prior yeah. before. Yeah, before because I have to leave because I'm headed off to Denver uh, after this because uh, my my life is nothing but uh, on the road all the time. So um, again, thank you, Ted. I really appreciate you oh. inviting me into your home and 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 into your shop, and I got to meet your dog. Uh, bean <laughs> and uh, and this wonderful helmet. So excellent. I'm sorry, it should have been finishedly painted, but um, oh no, dude, I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> but I love that you love it. So oh, guys, no, everybody, thank you so much, guys. Thanks for joining yeah. us and hanging out today. We're gonna wrap this up. I'm yeah. gonna jump over. Let me jump on the controls. Yeah. We'll see you room. And uh, if anybody's uh, interested in learning more about the stuff that I do, uh, go over to Props to History here on YouTube. And oh, please about, subscribe yeah. and shamelessly plug. Yeah, we're gonna do yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, and also, guys. If, you, if my button is red, you have not subscribed. Hit the subscribe button. Yeah, go over and subscribe to me too because I make cool content as well. <laughs> we both make content on YouTube, guys. Please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to wrap it up and uh, we're going to find a box to ship Mike's space helmet in. See you, everybody. Bye.